Well, I'm Boxbox. I a lot of people know me for League of Legends back in the day, and right now I stream TFT. I I've been streaming since I was 16 years old. I'm uh, uh 27. I'm 27 now. I been streaming League of Legends for about eight years and TFT for about uh three. I a lot of people know me for playing Riven back in the day, being that 16 year old Riven main who uh was very high up there with all the pros and did a lot of montage plays, and then now. Uh, I just dabble in strategy games, actually, kind of a weird pivot. Once Riot released TFT, their sister game, the strategy game with all the League of Legends characters, I jumped to that. I found it actually to be really good for streaming. Uh, I would say nowadays uh, a lot of my stream is playing TFT and then dabbling in other random fun games. I thought the AT&T Annihilator Kip was perfect. A lot of games I've played before for fun. Would it be fair for me to cla classify you as the TFT pro of the tournament? Is that, is that fair enough to say? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, of the people here. Got yes. you. And uh, so obviously, AT&T and I Cup, 250 k in the line. We're talking about four titles that you've played before. Fortnite, League of Legends, Street Fighter, and CS2. Of those titles, what are you most comfortable in? Obviously, I think League of Legends is the answer, but can you speak to some of the other titles that you've had history playing? Oh, actually, uh, I would say League of Legends is one of the things I'm most really? worried about. Surprisingly enough. Yeah, because um, there's 20 streamers who have all dabbled in League of Legends some amount. And they're we're we're put into teams. Uh, I don't know based on what criteria they're going to uh, balance the teams with, but like there will be like teams of varying skill levels. And I'm actually very scared that uh, they might think of me still as a League of Legends player. I haven't touched the game in years. Uh, I'm very scared that I'm not going to be able to pick up the game and perform up to expectations. The people who made the teams definitely expect people to like play at some level, and that's why they balance the teams. Uh, I'm personally pretty scared. <laughs> What about, what about some of the other titles? Fortnite, uh, we also got, of course, CS2 and Street Fighter. Of those three, what are you liking the most? Oh, uh, actually, I haven't told many people this, but I randomly dabbled in Street Fighter. Uh, it was my first ever fighting game, played about three months ago, because I um, I took place in an, uh, or I, I attended an event called The World's Greatest Gamer, an event yeah. held by Ludwig, and there randomly was Street Fighter. Uh, and it was like, Kind of similar to this format, where a bunch, it was 20 different streamers playing a bunch of different games for a large prize pool. And the game that I was worst at and eliminated on was Street Fighter. And after that, I was like, I was a little mad. So I uh, played Street Fighter afterwards, and I was like, okay, if this is my worst game and the one that I was getting eliminated on, I want to get kind of good at it. So I spent one month grinding it alone off stream, and uh, I hit the highest rank, uh, Masters. Although, it's worth clarifying that... There is a massive difference between the lowest master and the highest master. It's uh, but yes, I, I did hit masters. It took one month, and I highly doubt anyone else in this event has hit masters. So I think I'll have a significant wow, advantage. Wow, very cool. So you're the you're definitely the TFT guy amongst this list. You're playing against League of Legends pros. We got Fortnite pros. We have former Counter Strike people, and then dabbling mm -hmm. in between. You're definitely the TFT person, which lends itself more to strategy. How do you think those strategy based games? like offer you maybe an advantage across these titles? Oh, it absolutely doesn't. These are all like mechanical, raw, skill-based games that uh, you don't get a lot of time to think. Uh, I think my TFT uh, prowess will provide nothing here, but I've dabbled enough of the games that I think I'll do. Okay, average. I didn't want to say anything because I, I just wanted to ask the question, but I was like, these are a lot of like, you know, FPS almost style titles, shooter titles. So it's going to be interesting to see how your skill set plays in against all these other people but you also seem very much dedicated to learning a game like street fighter which some people they just go into the competition and they're like i'm gonna own my title and then see how the rest go so at least you have pretty decent experience across a couple yeah i've um i barely play cs but i've dabbled a lot in valorant and i i assume most of it will translate over I, I really hope it will translate over if not i'm very screwed do you have any strategies that you've done or anyone you've consulted ahead of time to prepare for this? Or has it kind of just been a solo venture? Uh, I've actually asked a couple people in the past uh, what they did. And in general, it was just like, uh, just practice your weakest games. Be uh, be pretty sweaty about it. Read the read the exact rules of the format. Like I'm, I'm very interested in this Fortnite because uh, in, in any like not team versus team game, there's a lot of like, uh unique ways you can score higher than normal despite not being good at the game 
and I'm going to be seeking a lot of these strats out. I actually really love that strategy. A huge part of AT&T Cup is like people see the titles and they think, oh, if you're good at CS, you're going to be good at the CS category and vice versa for any other game. But you're right. It really comes down to game mode and point scoring. So I, I like that strategy. Is there any one of the competitors you've seen on the list that you're concerned about? There's a lot of like top tier names, yourself included, when it comes to people being the high, high percentages of, of their games they play. Is there anyone in particular you're worried about? Yeah, uh, I'm actually worried about three people. I took a look at the roster yesterday, and I am particularly scared of uh, Jake and Bake. I was told that he won the previous one, and that he was like, like unexpectedly a monster at everything, despite not being a video game streamer. He's an IRL streamer in Japan. I I was also quite scared of uh, Doublelift and Pobelter, because um, I was looking at the League of Legends uh, teams, and I was very concerned because uh, there's only there's four teams. And there's only two people that are like like pro challenger league of legends players in there uh in fact i am, i'm almost very scared because i worry that whoever made the teams might have thought that i was one of them because i was known for league of legends but i'm not anymore and uh i couldn't help but notice i was listed as my team's captain and my team might be uh looking up to me like hey box box what do we do hey captain what's the plan i'm like i don't know i i don't know any of the items anymore i barely know my own character <laughs> So I feel like that one's going to be a train wreck. Yeah, yeah, and that's part of the excitement, right? It comes down to lineups, it comes down to teams, and it can it can really come down to a moment, too. It, it's going to be fun to see. Now, with that, though, they're also giving away $50,000 across all four weeks to charity. And I know we discussed before, but uh, you have a charity of choice, right? Yep, the LDS And that's Sanctuary. Maya's uh, charity, correct? Yep, I think it's really cool yeah, what she does. So as soon as I saw that name, I immediately yeah, chose her. Is there her. another reason behind behind choosing hers? I love the affiliation. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm certain that like all the charities are really cool. I just personally know this one. So when I saw on the list, I thought it was appropriate. Gotcha. Uh, a question I've been asking a lot of the competitors, and, and I'm not sure uh, whether to pertain this more to the esports side or the streaming side. I think you fit both roles. What's the craziest thing that streaming and esports has allowed you to do in your career? The craziest thing that esports and streaming has allowed me to do. Oh, actually, I have a pretty good story about this. Uh, I'm I'm sure you heard of like the term yep. subathon. Uh, I didn't I didn't I didn't know this would be a big idea, so I didn't patent it. I didn't call it box box a subathon, but I invented the subathon uh, when I was 17. Uh, the idea I had this idea. This was uh, in what 2013. I had the idea of like. What if you did a stream where like the main like attraction was you staying up like past the point of delusion and like people uh, incentivizing you to stay up and suffer? The idea of a very long stream that lasted a minimum 12 hours and then every time somebody donated or subscribed, it would add to a timer. It would add like minutes to a timer and you just make a commitment like I won't end my stream until this timer ends. Uh, that sounds exactly like what the modern subathon is now. Uh, that idea didn't exist back then. So I asked a friend who uh, was a programmer to give me a bot that just detects whenever someone subscribes and then add a uh, add an amount of time to a timer. Uh, but the, the million dollar invention was that I wanted the amount of time to be added to scale down over time. So the first $5 adds five minutes, but then like the $1,000 only adds like 30 seconds the ten thousand dollar only adds like five seconds uh and the idea is as you stay up past the point of deliriousness the time becomes more valuable and uh i specifically planned it out so that like when i've been up for 30 plus hours and i'm like passing on my chair people will be paying upwards of like 60 dollars a minute just to like keep me yeah. there suffering and in like almost like a zoo animal exhibit kind of thing i uh, i wasn't sure if it would work well but I was very interested in trying. So on the on the day of the League of Legends World Finals in season three, I waited until one hour before the League of Legends Finals ended when SKT was up 2-0. And I turned on my stream I'm like, yep, it's about time. And I made it so that as soon as the World Finals ended, my stream was next on the list and League of Legends ends. And then everyone's like, oh, I'll come check out this box box guy. And then suddenly, like, just like that, 3,000 to 60,000 viewers all watching me play. They're like, wait, no way this guy's going to solo queue for 30 plus hours. And then 
Uh, at first, the idea was very strange and outlandish. So I was like, yeah, you just subscribe. And like, it has like five minutes to the timer. It's a lot, a lot of bang for your buck. And then as I got, as I got higher up there, it, I lowered the time and I ended up going for about 34 hours before I got a genuine health concern. And, uh, I just made the timer so small that, uh, it was like bound to expire the amount of time added per minute. And it, it went, it went beautifully. I would never do it again. Uh, cause now I care about my health more than I care about money. But back when I was 17, this was like a very cool idea. I didn't patent it. I didn't call it the box boxes subathon. Uh, then as soon as I did it, a bunch of people asked me if they could steal the idea. I was like, yeah, go for it. I was so happy. I was like, oh my God, you guys love my idea. Do it. And then eventually somebody else just named it the subathon and the idea was no longer attached to me. So I was very sad about that. I, the idea was so good. I should have taken credit for it. Um, it's something that I would have liked to be, have been known for, but it's fine. I will be satisfied with, uh, knowing that I created it and then it got stolen many times and then re repeated. Um, I would say, uh, I think it's very cool what Ludwig did where he did the first ever subathon where he continued to keep the camera on him and then sleep on stream. Uh, all the other instances of it, I felt like were mostly just copying the idea. That was a dope story. Wait, so you, you said that, what was the year again? 2013. 2013. And you were, you were one of the first, if not the first ever to do that format that you saw. Yep, I had to make a custom bot for that it because is... like the idea just didn't exist. Um, eventually, I one of, one of like the main streaming tools company made a tool for it, and then it was very. It got I very didn't popular. expect when taking this call we'd find the origin of the subathon format. So thank you very much. <laughs> That's actually so so sick. Closing down with some questions here. Uh, bouncing off like the craziest story. That that's obviously a, an awesome story. When it comes to a LAN event, I'm not sure how many LAN events you had the chance to attend. Do you have any? crazy fan interactions or land stories that you could share either as a creator or competitor land interaction i can give you some examples if it helps spur any thoughts so yes. i talked to i talked yeah, to one me. pro player uh and he said he went to a land event and a fan wanted to give him an irl donation like pulled out his wallet he felt so bad he pulled out his wallet and put money in theirs instead another oh. another pro player they a person walked up, thought they were a different pro, and they just went with it. And they pretended to be that pro player because they knew it would ruin their day if they <laughs> knew the truth. Okay. Uh, I did go to a lot of lands back in the day relating to League of Legends. TFT, like, barely yeah, has any lands. Yeah, that's what I was curious. Sorry, yeah, give no me worries. a second. I got to rack through years no of memories. The, I, I've been very tame with my fan interactions. The only wild thing I've ever had uh, that, like, st sticks out in memory is a girl once asked me to sign her boob. And then... I said, my girlfriend went like that, and then she said, okay, no problem, and then left. But it always stands out to me as a very wild interaction. That's an awesome one. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it sounds like something that uh, people would like make up to brag about. So I don't really tell people about it. <laughs> no, that's, that's great. That's great. Oh, my goodness. You've had some... I, I like the thought you put into answers, too, before answering. Uh, my last one for you, and I'm not even sure if it's, if it's definitely a, a hands-on. It probably isn't, but I, I'm just so, so curious. What is it like to work technically for someone like Toast? Oh, uh, my relationship with Toast is very interesting. Uh, I I respect the man and I fear the man. Uh, it's hard to tell when he's angry, but he's also very talented. Uh, I would say our relationship is uh, very casual. He, uh, he will, I'm usually very careful about like what kind of terms I agree to, but uh, when Toast asked me to do stuff for DSG, I was just like, sure, sounds fun. And then we just verbally agreed on it. And then uh, our management's just like linked up a contract. And then I just said, okay, uh, without really caring about it, just because I thought the opportunity was cool. And then I was pretty certain that like he wasn't going to screw me over. I did have my management look to make sure I wasn't getting screwed over, but uh, yeah, we know we were fine. Uh, I would say it's... It's fun. Everything he's had me be involved in is a was a good time. And also, I didn't think I was going to get paid for a lot of things. And I randomly found out that like he did pay me, which was like, it's almost like the reverse of what <laughs> usually happens in the industry, where like, you think you're getting paid, but you're not. This time, I was just like, yeah, I'll do it for you. Like, uh, Toast has helped me out a lot in the past. And I think he's an interesting guy that I want to continue building a good relationship with. So I do it for free. And then I find out later, like six months later, it's actually like, oh, he actually did pay you a very reasonable salary for for what you did. And I was really happy. Yeah, because I remember I thought it was like back in the day. I wasn't sure if it was official or just for the content side of things. But you were coaching Toast and TFT years ago. And then a full circle moment is now you're technically like 
TFT for him. It's just kind of interesting how those things work, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's really cool that Toast dabbles in yeah, TFT. Yeah. Well, hey, that's all I had for you. Those were some amazing answers, dude. And, and I definitely appreciate your time. And best of luck with this whole competition, all right? You, you had some amazing answers. Yeah, oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Heck yeah.